I'm Tori, and today I'm going to be reviewing Now is the Time to Open Your Heart by Alice Walker. I listened to the audiobook narrated by Alfie Woodard, but I also checked this hard copy out of my library so I could kind of page through it, and also I still get that lovely paper book smell. So I read this book because it was the Tay Book Club pick for the month of November, and this is the first Tay Book Club book that I've actually read and finished during the month that it was actually happening. It's November 30th, so I just barely made it, but I still made it, and I definitely won't get this review up within the month of November because I'm very slow at editing reviews, but I will get it up as soon as I can. And at that point, Hannah Tay's actual review discussion will probably be out, so I'll go ahead and leave a link to that so that you can follow along and see what her opinions were. So this book is about a woman named Kate who goes on this kind of journey of self-discovery. She just kind of wants to get more in touch with who she is, and she just doesn't feel quite connected to the world or quite happy. And so she goes on this beautiful journey, kind of trying to get back to nature and explore the ideas of different cultures just to see how she can really feel grounded and connected to the world around her. This book was very thought-provoking and I loved seeing Kate's journey. So if you're interested in a very kind of introspective book without much plot, and it's mostly just this sort of emotional journey, then I would highly recommend that you go read this then come back to hear my opinion. So I think my favorite thing about this book was how many different cultures it drew from. Because you know Kate started out just going down the Colorado River and then she went ahead and went to South America and explored their traditions there. And in the meantime Yolo went to Hawaii and was looking at their traditions and there he met some people from Australia and they were talking about their traditions. And it was just all these amazing different ideas from all over the world, all these beautiful places and the ideas that had been there before Europeans kind of settled. And all these cultures had such beautiful ideas that were all distinct and their own, but were very harmonious with each other and all worked together very well and had a lot of similarities. I love the theme of water. You know, Kate was first dreaming of a dry riverbed and that's why she went down the Colorado River. And then her journey in South America was near a river, and Yolo went to an island in the middle of the sea, and there was just water everywhere. You know, her, they painted her house blue so that she could really connect to it and eat that color. And I love the idea of just filling up on a color and letting it wash over you, and that was so beautiful. I also really love the idea that there is no such thing as new water, and this idea that water connects us to the people who have lived thousands of years before us. It's the same water, our bodies are made of the same water that all these people before us had, and it's just such the beautiful idea that makes you feel so connected. I also love the serpent motif. I've always loved snakes and loved holding them and playing with them, and it was just fun to see snakes everywhere. And here they're not the villains. They're talking about how our culture has kind of vilified them, but snakes are very lovely little animals, and it was fun to kind of have them be a major theme running through the book. And then it was amazing to see all these different people that Kate and Yolo met on their journeys had gone through so many different kinds of trauma. You know, Kate had gone through her own traumas, and then the people she met, especially on her retreat in South America, had had such horrible things happen to them and been through such horrible experiences. Pretty much every character in the book had had something terrible happen to them because terrible things happen in life, and that didn't destroy them, you know. It, it hurt them and it changed them, but they were able to grow and to thrive and they were still whole, complete humans. And that was why most of them were on this journey, is they were trying to learn how to connect. And it was so beautiful to watch them, to see all these hurt, broken people come together to strengthen each other and to just heal together. It was also interesting to see everybody talk about their ancestors. You know, Kate thought a lot about her ancestors and how they had been slaves and the horrible, horrible things that had happened to them, and she felt this kind of weight on her shoulders from all of that. And that was kind of mirrored in a lot of things. You know, in Hawaii they talked about how they'd had this wonderful queen who ruled the islands and had to give everything up so that the Americans could come and just kind of take over and it was so devastating. And then that story of the um, rancher who had the Native American man come who was coming to give water to the bones and honor his ancestors. And it was really nice to think about because we don't think about ancestors a whole lot. And you know, I don't feel any really strong connection to my ancestors, but it seemed like the characters in this book got such comfort and just really enjoyed thinking about that heritage and thinking about their ancestors and the hundreds and thousands of people who came before them back through the generations. And it was just a really interesting way to think about the world. 
This book also spent a good bit of time talking about diet and health. You know, when Kate was first going down the Colorado River, she was sick accidentally, you know, and that was kind of like a cleanse. And then she went to South America and they had this whole thing where they um, took the grandmother medicine and they threw up a lot and kind of cleansed their bodies. And that was interesting. I'm used to hearing about that kind of thing in the context of sort of an eating disorder. So it was interesting to kind of see it portrayed in a different way and see people doing that kind of because they love their bodies. And then Yolo, when he was in Hawaii, was talking about all trying to, you know, be healthier, give up these bad habits, kind of to set an example. And I loved it that he promised to give up smoking and was trying to, and that it's a really good thing, and he was trying to be healthier and trying to treat his body with more respect, and that's great. And then, you know, he slipped and Kate caught him smoking outside. And usually it seems to me when people in our society are on a diet or trying to give up smoking or trying to do something to make themselves healthier and they get caught, the person who catches them says, oh, I'm going to talk you through this, I'm going to keep you on the right track, we're going to do this. And it's good that they want to help, but that can also come across as really judgmental and can make the person who slipped feel so bad about themselves. And I just love the way that Kate said, it's great if you want to give up smoking and I completely support you and I'm going to help you. But you don't have to stand out here in the cold and she was going to make a special place for him to come inside and she made it clear that he's still a good person and he's still valued and still loved and that's so important and i think that a lot of diets and habits that we're trying to quit would go better if we could love ourselves while we're doing them and not hate ourselves and feel such shame while we're trying to give them up and i just thought that was such a beautiful message of being supportive but still loving and completely non-judgmental. And then I liked Kate's relationship with YOLO and then all the past relationships she had had too. Because, you know, people will talk about, I want to try everything. But usually when people say that, they leave out a big chunk of things. And Kate had really tried almost everything in relationships. She had a stereotypical stable marriage that lasted a long time and they had kids. And then she had lovers after that, and she had married different people, both men and women, and she had lovers who were both men and women, and she'd really tried all the different relationships, the long marriages, the short marriages, the love affairs that were temporary but still very important. And after her journey, she wanted to try being celibate for a while and see how that affected her life. And I just thought that was so wonderful that she was really trying to get the most out of life and just kind of experience every different relationship she could. And then at the beginning of the book, she kind of thought her relationship with Yolo was over, and he did too, because she really needed to go on this journey, and they were okay with that. They didn't, like, kind of officially break up, but they knew they were kind of going their separate ways. And she set out on this journey, and it was so good that she could do that for herself. She wasn't trying to, like, build her life around him. She said, this is what I really need right now, and I'm going to go do that. And he was willing to let her go. And then he planned to just go on this really touristy vacation to Hawaii, the most stereotypical place you can. But once he got there, then he got really invested in the culture and he went on a very similar journey to the one Kate went on. And it was so beautiful to me that they were willing to let each other go. They were willing to give each other space and say, okay, I'm not going to cling to you desperately. Let's take our time and go on these separate journeys. And they ended up journeying in kind of the same direction so that when they saw each other again, they had a much stronger relationship. And it was just so beautiful to see that and to be willing to not mold their lives around each other, but just kind of gently grow together. And at the very end, they decided to have a marriage. And at this point, you know, they're not worried about legal stuff at all. Kate is has no need for legal marriage. She just has the emotional kind now. And they're going to have this beautiful circle and invite all the different people that they had met along their journey. And it was just such a beautiful way to finish the journey. And they were both able to go on these really amazing journeys. You know, Kate was able to get a better sense of herself and connect more to nature and to her ancestors and just kind of feel a general connection to the world, which is what she'd really been wanting. And at the end, they were able to come together again and celebrate that with this wonderful circle of all the different friends they'd made. And it was just such a beautiful story. And it was just amazing how much it focused on love, loving each other, loving yourself, loving the world, and just this wonderful connection to life all around you. So I had such a wonderful time with this book. It was my first Alice Walker, and now I definitely want to read more by her and kind of see what else she has to say about life.